Hello, this is Jack Jackson. In this video, we're going to talk about an inverse binomial probability program that we're going to put in a TI-84. So we're going to uh, work this out a, a little step at a time. So here's an emulator for a TI-84. And so we're going to start by going to Program, Create New, and we're going to call this program inverse binome I N V uh, inverse binome I N V B I N O M B I N O M okay inverse binome okay that's good we'll call that the name now the first thing you're gonna have to put in to identify which binomial we're gonna have to have it input the N and the P. So let's give a little prompt statement. So program IO uh, display first. Put alpha lock quote which is right here above the, on the plus. Um, sample size is, uh, is first. N sample A is sample size. N is sample size. S A M P L E space S I Z E uh, S I Z E uh, quote enter and then we're going to prompt for that so program I O two prompt and we're going to call that in so that's their sample size normally it's a lowercase n but it's going to be in on this. So that's the end. That's the first thing we want to give it. The next thing we want to give it is the probability of a success. So that's P. And so let's go over here and tell it it's what we're putting in. Again, display, alpha lock, quote, uh, probability of a success. P, R, O, B, A, B, I, L, I, T, Y of O F uh, A. I think that'll all fit on one line. Quote, enter, and then this uh, success is going to go on the next line. Another display statement. Display success, and this, of course, is the probability of success each time. And now prompt it. So that's prompt. Right, uh, program right, uh, right arrow to I input output prompt. And uh, the probably success we're going to call alpha p. All right. Now we need to, to uh, generate a value of a so that the oh I'm sorry we need to give the cumulative probability next. That's what we need to input input that too. So let's do that next. Program I O display let's tell it what we want cumulative C D I V E uh, I think we're going to need another row another line for probability And quote probability P R O B A B I L I T Y probability quote and then prompt it for we're going to call that C alpha C all right so now we want to find a probability at an X value a so that the cumulative probability is basically C and basically we want to find out uh, maybe a couple of values two or three values around that value that we want to work into a probability table so our first estimate is going to be using a normal approximation to a binomial so we're going to go second distribution and number three is an inverse normal so we're going to use that would ask for area that's a cumulative probability so that's C the mean is going to be the mean of the distribution of uh, binomial it's n times p so we've got that stored as n times p 
and the standard deviation is the square root of uh, n times p times q. q is 1 minus p, like that. And we're going to take that and store it as a. That's our first estimate of a. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to take the, we want to round this down. So we're going to go to math number uh, three, integer part of a, what we have before for a. That'll round it down. And I want to subtract one more from that and store that as a. So this will be hopefully plenty low enough. And then, but we don't want to go too low. We can't go below zero. So we want to go to uh, math number max, number seven. And we want, to, we want to, if it goes below zero, we want to take whichever one of those, whoops, I didn't need to do that. Uh, that's okay, we'll get that there, okay. Alpha A. And we want to do whichever one's bigger, zero or A, and use that as A. Okay, that's going to be our initial value for A. Okay, it is a whole number. It could be zero, can't be any lower, uh, but it might be bigger, and it'll be some value of A. We're going to use that A, one bigger than that, and one bigger than that. So three different values of A. And we want to make a, matri make a matrix. Okay, so this matrix is going to have actually three columns, one for X, one for the proportion, the P hat, and then one for the CDF of A. CDF of X. So that's going to be three columns and it's going to have three values in it. So that'd be three rows. So we want a three by three matrix. So to make sure it's a three by three, I'm going to go curly braces there, three comma three, close the curly braces and store that as the dimension of the matrix. So we're going to go to matrix, which is second here. And we're going to go to math, choose number three, dimension. And we're going to tell if that's for matrix. So second matrix, matrix A. And close that, and that'll make sure the matrix is a three by three matrix. Now we just got to enter in each of these things. So we're going to start by taking uh, A and store that as matrix A in the one one position, first row, first column position. Now we need to find the proportion of A, which is A divided by N. And we're going to store that in matrix A in the first row, second column position. And then we're going to find the CDF of this, which is the binomial CDF. So we go to distribution, up arrow to binomial CDF. Okay, number of trials is N. Probably the success is uh, P, and the X value is A. And if you don't have this, uh, the wizard come up, you just got to make sure you type those things in that order. And we want to store that in matrix A. And we want to store that in the first row, third column position. All right, that's going to get our first row. Now let's do our second row. We're going to take the value of A and add 1 to it and store that in our matrix A in our first row, second row, first column, like that. We're going to take parentheses A plus 1, close parentheses, divide by N. And we're going to store that in our matrix A in the second row, second column position. Now we're going to go back to distributions and do a binomial CDF. Uh, that's N, that's P, that's still right, but we want to do A plus 1 here and put it in like that and store that in our matrix, matrix A, in the second row, 
third column. Okay, now we got the second row done. Let's get the third row. So we're going to take uh, A plus 2, store that in our matrix, and that's going to be in the third row, first column. We're going to take that parentheses, A plus 2, divide it by N to find its corresponding P hat or proportion. And we're going to store that in our matrix in the third row, second column position. We're going to go to distribution now and go to binomial CDF. Uh, this is the same, except I want this to be A plus 2 here. And I want to store that in the matrix. Notice I'm hitting enter after the end of every row. And the three, every entry I mean, every line of code, A in the third row, third column position. Now our matrix is all set up. Now let's go into display some answer. So let's give a little line here that sort of explains what's, what's coming for the user. So we're going to say display, quote, We're making a CDF table, so let's let's say um, parentheses uh, x comma. Now you have some choices. You can call this pro, uh, proportion. You can call it p. I'm just going to call it p hat. Okay, but you can change it to something else if you want. P dash hat. which is our sample proportion. And then we have, uh, let's put the alpha lock on this time, CDF, take the alpha off of X, and then alpha quote. Oops, one more, one more parentheses first. Parentheses, alpha quote. So it'll print that on the, on the line before it shows us the matrix so we can kind of interpret what's in the matrix. Now we just need to display their matrix. So that's program uh, IO display and then the matrix which is second matrix A and we're done. So that should do that should do it. Hopefully this is going to work for us. So let's see if this works. Let's see program. Hopefully we didn't make any mistakes here. Program execute binome inverse binome that's going to ask us for the sample size. Let's say we have a sample size 25. The probability of success is 0.2 each time. And we want to find when the cumulative probability first reaches 0.9. And it says our, our matrix is X, P hat, and CDF of X. And here are some, some X values, the corresponding uh, P hat values, the proportions, and then the corresponding cumulative probabilities. And notice the cumulative probability first exceeds 0.9 at 8, so when there are actually 8 items, it's actually a little higher than 0.9, it's more like 0.95 something. But if we go down to 7, we're only at 0.89, we haven't quite made it to 0.9. So depending on the problem, you might want to know the first place where it exceeds 0.9, which would be 8, or you might want the first place before it exceeds 0.9, and that might be 0.7. So hopefully it'll be one of the three values in the table that this generates. Let's do one more. Uh, I could just hit enter and it'll run it, run it again. Let's try another one. Uh, let's say we have a sample of size 87 and the probability of the success is 0 0.9, uh, about 0 0.8. And we want to find the median. Well, the median is when the cumulative probability first exceeds 0 0.5. And so there we go. And uh, now, that one was interesting because um, it it ran off the the screen a little bit to see it. But if I go back to matrix and go to matrix A, it's still stored there, and so I could should be able to go up here and uh, and arrow across. Should be able to. Let's see if I can get it back. Matrix A. 
should be able to arrow. Yeah, as long as I do it right now, I can arrow across here and uh, find these find these values. Now, if that's too many decimal places for me to see, if I'd like to see it a little bit more closely, I can. I can force it to do that by changing the mode, but I, I prefer to just to see all the decimal places I can. I can round it off where I want. So notice it first exceeds 0.5 here at the top, whatever these three X values, it's the top one is the first time it actually exceeds 0.5. That happens at 70. So 70 is the median of this particular one.